Hi everyone, it's Laura and I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be talking through the books that I read last month, in the month of January, which we have got through finally. I'm very pleased that it's February now. It feels like we are just easing into spring. So I read quite an interesting group of books this month and I will start with <laughs> the first one I read because where else would I start which is If You Could Be Mine by Sarah Farazan and this was recommended to me by I think um, Ollie, who, whose channel I will link below when we were on a booktube meetup and we were in Gay is the, Gay is the Word and I'm pretty sure he, he recommended this to me um, literally about two or three years ago but I have finally picked it up so thank you for your recommendation Ollie. I don't know whether you would exactly call this book YA or not it does have a bit of that vibe but because I don't read that genre a lot I'm, I don't really know how to identify it when I see it but this is about two teenage girls who are living in Iran and have been in a relationship for a couple of years but being gay in Iran is illegal and one of the girls Nazarene gets to a point where she's like well I'm gonna get married now like it's 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 time I'm gonna get married to a man and Sahar whose story we're following of this book obviously takes this very very badly um she's really worried about who she is as a person how she can be happy she's sad about seeing Nazreen getting married to a man um, and she goes through this whole process of wondering whether she should transition into being a man because actually being transgender in Iran is legal because they have this idea that they're fixing the problem like if you're gay that means you should want to be a woman or want to be a man or whatever so she goes on this journey exploring that option and she is very young she's about 17 so she's she's really not sure what other options are available to her or how she can live her life and be happy within this society. Um, I thought this was a very interesting look at what it's like growing up in that kind of society where you feel like you're not free to be yourself and you're not free to do lots of things in fact. Um, but also other people find ways to get around the system or find ways to live their lives more more liberally but in secret. The one thing I'd say is I think the aspect of Sahar like looking into becoming transgender wasn't handled maybe as well as I would have liked because I think it was made clear by the book that this is, you know, this isn't the same thing. You, this isn't going to solve your problems. You're not transgender, you're just, you're gay. But it, it, I think it is made clear that this isn't a good decision for her to be taking. But it's almost like she doesn't think it through properly herself. I, I don't know. It, she's just like, well, when I'm a man, it'll be fine and I'll just marry Nazreen and we'll be, we'll be together. And I feel like that, even that is too simple for what you would be thinking, even if you're a teenage girl and you think, oh, that's fine, that will solve my problems. It felt like she just decided this very, very quickly. But despite that, I thought it was interesting how that aspect was was in the novel um, at all. And um, I think on the back, I've just checked on the back, it does say that it's YA. So um, I think, especially through that lens, it's really interesting having this LGBT book, but set in a completely different society. I think Sarah Farazan, her parents are Iranian, so she is Iranian, but she, she grew up in America. Um, so, it, she's got that sort of dual lens of what a Western reader would be expecting to read, I suppose, um, and also about society in Iran. Next, I picked up A Far Cry from Kensington by Muriel Spark, which I've been meaning to read for a very, very long time. I've not read any Muriel Spark before, um, and I bought this book, I wanna say, like five years ago. So yes, well done, Lauren. Ticked another one off the TBR list. This is the story of a woman who I think is a proxy for Muriel Spark, um, who is someone who's working in publishing, living in London, she lives in Kensington in this rooming house with some other interesting characters. And on first glance, it's really just about her going about her day and meeting all these eccentric characters. There's a guy who um, wants to be a published author but writes very, very badly, who just won't leave her alone, and that's quite funny. Um, a lot of the people that she lives with have their own little eccentricities. And at first it feels like it's not really about very much, it's just about her daily life, and she has some wry and witty observations on that. Like, the main character's voice I did really like. But then towards the end, suddenly, there was so much plot, and I'm not going to spoil it, but it's like the kind of thing where they just, it comes out of nowhere that someone got murdered or something like so extreme. And I was just like, what is happening? That's not what I was expecting from this book. And all the plot comes together in a really weird and interesting way. Um, whereas I just thought all of these people were completely separate and not linked at all. So that was... It was quite surprising. I don't know if I liked it. I did I did enjoy it because suddenly I was really invested. Um, but because it felt like it came out of nowhere, I was like, this isn't the book I thought I was reading. So it was an interesting experience. I don't think this is like my top book that I've ever read, but I did enjoy reading her writing. Um, so I'd like to read some more of her stuff. So if you can give me a recommendation in the comments below, if you've had read more of her, um, 
that would be really helpful. I'm doing these in a bit of a funny order, but I'm gonna save the most interesting books to last, I think. So the next one I have to talk about is Escape Roots by Naomi Ishiguro, which is a book of short stories. And this was a bit hit and miss for me. There are a couple of stories in here which I thought were excellent. There's a very interesting story about a couple who buy this teddy bear at auction, and then it just seems like it takes over their lives, and they never really talk about how or why, but the, the woman keeps moving the teddy bear around, and it's kind of getting in the way of their relationship. And I thought that was very bizarre, but I really liked it. There's a story about a little boy who is obsessed with space and NASA and he meets someone who is a PhD student I think who's studying space and, and gets really into it and has a bit of an odd relationship with him and those stories which felt very standalone I really really loved and it felt like there was a little elements of magical realism or or a little bit abstract a little bit of the absurd in there which I really enjoyed and then there's some other stories in here which really felt like actually the beginnings of a novel or she wasn't really sure where they were going to go there's a there's a reoccurring story about a rat catcher in a palace and i couldn't really work out what time period this was meant to be set in but perhaps that's the point of it but she comes back to this this tale like two more times so I felt a little bit like, well, why is it in your book of short stories? If you, if you really want to elaborate that story, it should be something else. So it felt quite mixed and to the point where I can't actually remember that many other stories. There's only a couple that really stood out for me. But I think if it's a first collection, hopefully this is a, this is a step in the right direction and she'll go on to write some more, some more good things because there's definitely like talent in there. Next, I want to talk about my favourite book of the month. And I feel like already... My favourite book, obviously of the year so far, that's a stupid thing to say, but I feel like this will be in one of my in my top 10 lists, even at the end of 2020, and that is Pain and Prejudice by Gabrielle Jackson. I listened to this on audiobook, which I like to do with non-fiction, and this is a look at the history of women within the medical establishment, essentially. It came out of the fact that Gabrielle Jackson has endometriosis, and she went for years without it being diagnosed properly. She has other conditions as well, which I can't actually remember, but there's a, there's a few different things that she suffers from, and it just it took so long for doctors to really understand what was wrong with her and for her to get proper treatment and so she started by writing some articles about it and got a really big response from other women and so she's gone on to write this book and she's really researched everything and what I really enjoyed about it is that on the surface it feels like it's looking at a very specific subject but she really widens it out um, and sometimes when I was listening to some of the chapters I thought well, why are you talking about this aspect like there's one chapter which opens where she talks about the Madonna whore complex and at first I was like I literally don't understand how this is relevant but she brings it back and talks about how women aren't used to talking about their own bodies like in a medical way or they're not used to talking about sex it makes it very difficult for them to explain to doctors when something is wrong or even to know if something's wrong like perhaps sometimes people think that sex should be painful so they don't go to the doctor there, there's so many layers as to why there is inequality for women within medicine and um, she also does a whole backstory on hysteria and the nature of hysteria and she goes through its whole history and like different instances of where men would present with the same symptoms of, as women but it would men would be diagnosed with depression and women would be diagnosed with hysteria for example um, and it's so far-reaching it makes me so angry <laughs> Um, it's one of those books where I feel like I could just keep giving you examples all day and it would just get really boring. But one other thing I wanted to talk about is how even now, like she, she's saying that medical trials are so often performed on, on men, on male bodies, on male um, lab, lab rats even. And she really highlights that this isn't just a problem for women's conditions, for example, problems of the uterus or the pelvis or anything like that. Um, it's also for n normal conditions that affect everybody. So for example, symptoms of heart attacks present differently in women than they do in men and heart disease is one of the biggest killers, but doctors just aren't trained to treat women in the same way. They're, they're trained on men, and women are only, only come into it in instances of like pregnancy and gynecology where it doesn't affect men at all. Um, and they're much more likely to think that women are imagining symptoms or women are just stressed or whatever. And, and there's so many studies that she goes through, so many examples. And my overall impression is just that I was so impressed with the amount of research, the amount of examples that she includes, and when she really brings it home to you about the, the amount of times healthcare and pain are, are present in a woman's life and, and just how much this, this affects us, um, I just thought it was really fantastic. And finally, for January, I picked up Milkman by Anna Burns, which won the Booker Prize in 2018. 
And this was interesting. I'd heard this was a bit stream of consciousness like, but I think maybe I was getting it confused with another Booker Prize book. I mean, let's be honest, if this was a very literary book, it was very much about the style in which it had been written. Um, and you know, they all merge into one sometimes, don't they? But I did think this was very impressive. So this is about a young woman who's looking back on her life in an unnamed city in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. I think sort of during, during the 70s this is set. And she is being harassed essentially by this much older man who is just known as Milkman, who um, just comes and talks to her and follows her and knows a lot about her life. And because of these meetings, there then becomes this whole range of gossip around the town that she's having an affair with with the milkman who's like 40 40 and she's 17 or something and it's about her coping with this situation coping with the incessant gossip um, and being told that she's not like the rest of the community from her mother and from her friends and also trying to avoid the milkman um, and she's sort of a very young girl who's inequipped to deal with this kind of attention and she talks about how you know, he's not really done anything. He's not physically done anything to me. He's just making me feel uncomfortable. So therefore, he's not done anything wrong. Like, how can I complain about this? And the way it deals with the nature of harassment, I thought was incredible. And there are so many aspects of this book which I think are really, really impressive. It really reminded me of Catch-22, where they're living in this situation which is so dangerous and so incomprehensible. And, but, but it become, almost becomes like the troubles and the political situation aren't the problem anymore and they become a little bit eccentric and a little bit erratic and they start focusing on these weird little day-to-day -day things that are happening instead and it's really about the nature of gossip and and sort of mob mentality in a way and that's exemplified by the fact that nobody is named in the book she calls people um you know second brother-in-law and somebody mcs somebody and somebody mcs somebody's younger brother and and it but that, that really works because it, it's not really about the people themselves it's about what they're doing and the environment that they're in and it is a bit difficult to read in the way that it's not linear it is sort of like a stream of consciousness in that she'll talk about well the second time I met Milkman this had happened but two weeks before that that's when I've sp spoken to my wee sisters about this issue that they were having and then um, my mother came to the door and this happened and then and then we got back to the second meeting with the Milkman the only problem I had with it is that I felt like there was like one or two tangents too many it is just about 100 pages too long and I think it could have done with an edit because what what she's what she's doing is so good and so impressive and while I was reading it I loved reading it but when I put it down I felt like no impulse to pick it up again I just think it's a shame that it's not slightly shorter because a book of this nature and something written in that style like you're asking quite a lot of your of your readers to keep going with that all the way through I think it's like 350 pages so it's quite long really it's not like a short book um, and it's very very dense there's like no dialogue like that on the page like there's just so much there's so many words on the page and it's not really split out at all so it there's a lot in there to read so I do see why it won the prize I am very impressed by the book and I and I really enjoyed it but it's still not like one of my personal favorite reads ever if that makes sense so that was my January. As always, I would love to hear what you've been reading in the first part of the year. And especially let me know if you've read any of these books. I'd love to keep talking about them in the comments below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.